Hello everyone, Blink here. The following is a coaching session that I had with a gold player where we cover several botlane concepts like back timings, botlane dynamics, lane priority, winning conditions, and even how to fix a lot of mistakes and practice the right way. If you're interested in this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. If you have any questions about League, make sure to join my Discord. Link in the description. And now, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay. So, the first one I would say is CS per minute. Um, as, a, yeah. as an average, I think you can bump it up to 7.5 um, for ADCs, most likely. Um, I think that's a, kind of like an attainable goal for game. I don't really think that you should oh, actually shoot for 10 CS per minute. That's actually not even um, a thing because then you end up um focusing too much on cs right instead of uh i had a game recently where I almost reached 10 cs per minute but that was like really passive like i did didn't do anything that game mm -hmm. except for farming uh but yeah my cs is not not good like i, I wouldn't say it's not good um i would just say that you can improve it like you're very close you just need one more cs per minute uh, as, as average and you already have 7.5 like even i don't even go for more than eight or something uh, as as average, then, right? yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think ADCs uh, have like on average more CS per minute, but like yeah. Yeah, I would uh, I would say so. Yeah, like if you don't have to like roam a lot early game, you should actually look for yeah, kind of a like higher CS per minute and just from the value of items with ADCs, you know, kind of like ADCs don't really scale too much with levels. They they scale a lot with with items more than levels, so. Um, I would say that you actually need to prioritize CS in a lot um, with ADC. Mm -hmm. So uh, as an average, I would shoot for uh, 7.5 CS per minute. Um, I'm not really sure what is causing you to not get 7.5. It might be lane related or, you know, mid game to late game related, the CS per minute drop. Um, mm -hmm. We can totally go and look that in the in the, in the VOD. Um, yeah. I think it's uh, related to mid and late game and to my deaths because I die a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that was actually the second point I wanted to go over. Kind of like reduce deaths per game um, yeah. and shoot for something like three to four deaths per game as average. I would say that's attainable for ADCs as, as you play kind of like a, a range matchup. You don't really, a range champion, so you don't really need to die in a lot of situations, right? You, you would only need to die in specific situations where it's like a team fight or you know like a justified reason to die um i always try to look out for avoidable deaths in the sense that they don't really you know they're kind of like inconsistent because you're already coin flipping every time you go for a fight and coin flipping it's the only way you can actually die right oh. if you if you go Sorry. for a play do you uh, hear echo or something because... um I, I hear correctly. Uh, do you hear do, anything? No, do you hear uh, an echo from me? So no, no, actually, no, no. It, everything's fine. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought because my mic was saying I was saying something. Something. Ah. Okay, sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um. Uh, so yeah, uh, death per game. I like to have them kind of like uh, in check because I think that every death per game, every death in in the game is kind of like justified with an objective behind it, right? You never want to just coin flip. Uh, for for nothing, so that's kind of like the approach I go with death per game. Of course, we can go more in depth into how to practice that, but the the basic um, idea behind it is that you will actually try to avoid deaths that are not necessarily um, needed. For example, if you go and chase a kill that you don't really know if it's worth because you have no summoners, you don't really know if it's gonna if you're gonna get it. Um, and then you ditch yeah. you ditch one one or two waves because of the kill that you could have easily gotten the, the goal from the kill from the wave you know kind of like those basics. Um, I like to yeah. always go for the CS and only die in team fights. You know, only die where it when it matters because uh, that's how can you that's how you kind of like achieve consistency, right? With your deaths per game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely something I need to work on. Um, because, but I, I just uh, get really um, like, uh, I, I feel like I need to do th something and then I run into the enemy and die <laughs> because I feel like I need to do something for my team and then I and 
end up just dying. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I exactly know what you mean. It, ha it happened to a lot of players. It happened to me before. Even it even happens to me to this day. It's kind of like... Um, I like the word that um, there's another guy, Coach uh, Coach Curtis. I don't know if you know about him. Yeah. He I uses the he uses the word uh, compensation for this mistake. Basically, he calls it compensation. You're basically trying to compensate for your team, right? Um, mm -hmm. You don't really know what they're doing. They're kind of like doing something that you think is wrong, but you end up following because you know you don't want to get flamed or you feel like it's the right thing just because they went in. So you should when they go in, you know. It's kind of like a very, not very thoughtful process, right? You just feel like it. It's kind of like a feeling, yeah. not really like uh, something you've objectively thought about. So um, uh, it's definitely something you can work on. I would say the, the best way to go about it and fixing this habit, because at the end it's just a habit of like following your team into decisions that you don't really uh, agree with, but you still feel like going on. The way I do it is kind of like getting a Smurf account where where you don't really feel too much pressure um to yeah. to win or to do anything and kind of like <laughs> this might sound rude but kind of like ditch your teammates you know every time <laughs> yeah. every time you see them doing something you it's like what are you guys doing you know just not going um and you sort of like start developing this habit basically yeah i i don't know i'm not very good at that i mean uh but most of my deaths are actually solo like i try to do something and i die but yeah some of my deaths are because uh, i try to follow my team into a bad situation and we all end up dying or something <laughs> um i i created a smurf account recently but it just feels weird played on it playing on it because it's not level 30 yet and so mm -hmm. i play against uh like new players um yeah, I don't know, but I'm I'm going to level it like maybe first win of the day because I think that gives bonus experience and then yeah, once I reach 400 level 30, or yeah. then like uh, the skill will like equalize and I will play against players that are worse than my actual rank but not much worse. Yeah, basically, like you look for players that are you know kind of like serious. Not necessarily be mm -hmm. good, but yeah, yeah, they're serious about you know yeah, going I, right. I, I don't really like practicing normal because like there's a lot of players first time stuff and that. I mean, playing normals is really fun sometimes, but uh, I don't really like practicing mm -hmm. like playing normals. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely shoot for the for the sh uh, rank um, Smurf account in that in that regard. Then um, it might take a while, but you can actually even buy uh, XP boost um, if you want to yeah. invest money or or just go by it normally, but uh, maybe you can, like you said, exploit the uh, first win of the day and you don't have to invest that much time and you can level it up just by winning one game a day, basically. Yeah, might I will definitely try that. Yeah, it might take like a month if you only play one game on it, but it's your, as long as you're not investing too much time, then it's kind of like worth it in, in, a, in a sense. Uh, mm -hmm. m meanwhile, what you could try to do is just go flex queue. I like a lot flex queue. When when I didn't have a smurf, I would just instantly go flex queue to practice stuff. So okay. um, that might be also another option if you if you want to try it out. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Um. And the last thing about the OBG that I was noticing is um kind of like being more consistent with the blue trinket uh in ADC <laughs> role. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's yeah, it's kind of yeah, like I, a you know it's kind of just the habit. Uh, I end up mentioning it, mentioning it a lot. You know, a lot of players don't have the habit, but it's kind of like all way uh, well accepted. Like overall, that uh, ADC is the best uh, trinket you can get is uh, blue trinket after nine, ten level, um, just because of the nature of ADCs and how far away and well positioned you need to play on this role. Um, so blue trinket actually makes perfect sense since you normally will not get the red trinket unless you're playing. Uh, I don't know what uh, ADC you might Timo Senna my my actually I don't know um but yeah I, I would go all normally always go for blue trinket yeah. because it's kind of like the best one to instantly spot from this from distance um and you can actually get the long range vision without having to face check any any brush basically um but of course there are sit certain situations where where you might like to hold the red uh, yet uh, yellow trinket uh, for a few more minutes just because of the state of the game so that's something you need to decide in the game um, mm -hmm. but I would say as long as you end up <laughs> with a blue trinket you know at the end of the game that's kind of like what, what you should shoot for uh, with ADCs um, yeah. 
and ju just like any other habit this is very easy to practice you just like what i do is i type it in the excel for like five games and in those five games i go into like a smurf account where i'm not really focused on winning and the only thing i'm thinking is like okay this might sound like very uh, absurd but i would just go and say okay this game i'm just gonna get blue trinket at nine level you know i don't care about anything else and if you do it for like five maybe ten games um it's basically 100 percent chance that you will you will make a, a new habit you know and it will be very auto yeah. automatic next times yeah okay yeah okay um, okay great uh, so yeah that's basically about the OPGG I can uh, go take a look at the vote if uh, if you want right now yeah um, so do you want to like I have I think five games or something so mm -hmm. do you want uh, I think I have two wins and three losses uh, upload what do you want or should I select like a vote um, from which game is it is it this uh, last uh, five games uh the last two then i'm not sure. not the third one from the top uh i think the one yeah three kaisa game is this one is uh, uh recorded you mean right yeah okay. i've uploaded that then the four two six game but mm -hmm. uh, Jax was just insanely fat that game uh and i think the game before that also this one right yeah okay this one might be interesting, the 488, if you want to go and look at it, um, because I see you have a good CS per minute, um, so there's something that maybe made the game go wrong at, cer at a certain point in the game. Uh, yeah, so I, that I might be interesting. Okay, let me search it. Mm. You played with uh, Dimitrov. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was... Uh... Yeah, you will see. <laughs> you will see. I like that. <laughs> oh god damn. Oh, the steam uh, stuff. Okay. okay. I I I probably think it this guy is Bulgarian. I'm hundred percent sure. Dimitrov. Oh man, I know my people. They've hundred percent int. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he he was he, but he was nice. <laughs> <laughs> that he, means... he said he was out of it, so like I, I mean, I actually, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yep, I sent you the link. Okay. All right, there we go. Let me just mute the vote. All right. Uh, well, before we keep going, like what I like to do a lot in the kind of like the loading screen, um, every nor every every game that i play is kind of like as a good habit you know try to figure out what is going to be the plan for this game um to do yeah. so i basically do like a roundup of the win conditions of each lane and then a win condition as a team overall this is okay. something that might seem like I'm overwhelming yeah like at the beginning this might seem very overwhelming kind of like like you know you're, you're not supposed to know every matchup you're not supposed to know how every lane goes uh, but you will get better at this. Uh, you don't need to be good uh, in the beginning. It's, it's almost impossible. Yeah. You just need to practice it, you know, do it every day. You will make mistakes about it, but that's how you're going to learn and okay. and get a lot of knowledge, actually, from, from doing this. Okay. So we can, uh, yeah, we can, can actually can do it. it. Yeah, I, we can I do mean, it together. Uh, I usually do it for, like, my lane, like, bot lane, and look at the jungle, like, if, if they can... Um, whatever, but I mm -hmm. don't usually end, uh, look at bot, uh, look at mid or top lane. Yeah, like I would not try to, you know, prioritize a lot about it. Um, as long as you, I mean, it it doesn't take too much. Like for example, we can just assume, okay, Urgot and Garen top, right? This hundred percent looks like a Urgot, um, a good matchup as he has the range advantage. Uh, but I see Garen, for example, has ignite. What does this mm. mean? This maybe means that the Lee Sin is more inclined to gank that lane. Um, if he wants to utilize the aggressiveness of Ga of Garen Ignite. Um, but of course, this is just a, a chance. It, this guy might not even notice that Garen has Ignite. So we always try to like analyze those things. Maybe it plays out like this, maybe not. But at least we have that kind of like primed in the, in the, in the mind. Okay, um, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. The um, um, jungle matchup, for example. Let's try to see. Wait, listen, has Aftershock. Oh, I didn't even notice that. 
Like, I, I, I wish I didn't notice <laughs> the lesson has aftershock. Okay. Uh, so it's like someone forgot to change. It's good, so it's pretty good, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, go 1v5, ult someone, <laughs> and then tank all the damage. Then he's invincible. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, definitely, uh, Lee Sin is pretty good early game, but so, so he could try to invade Amumu. I don't really know. Um, but Amumu is definitely better in team fights later on. Mm -hmm. um, and they both can gank early, um, but Lee Sin is more like more of an early ganker, I would say. I don't yeah. really know a lot of about jungle. <laughs> Yeah, basically, basically what you said. Honestly, it's not even it's not even that uh, far away from from reality. Like the scene is a very early ganking centered, invade centered kind of like wants to make plays and accelerate the tempo of the game so that you can close it out quick. Uh, on the other hand, Amumu is very like weak early game. He can get invaded very easily if he loses his first buff. He's kind of like screwed. Um, he wants to power farm, get level six gank bot with level six potentially. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of junglers like Amumu, uh, maybe Nocturne, junglers that like to get level 6 or that need to get level 6 before doing a gank will almost likely use that 6 to gank bot lane because by the time the jungler is 6, the bot lane might be level 4 or 5. So there's a big XP gap there um, compared to solo lanes, which will have the same level as the jungler. Um, and you want to utilize that gap to uh, have higher chance of succeeding in the gank. Okay. Plus no, camping, no, plus camping bot lane is the best way to win. <laughs> uh, sorry, what? Uh, I, I said like plus ganking or camping bot lane is the best way to win <laughs> <laughs> since like yeah. three seasons. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And we can ignore mid lane a little bit because it doesn't really matter too much for us. Um, and then the bot lane matchup. Um, how do you see it uh, from your point of view? Mm, one sec. Uh, like. I'm going to write down that like level six gank, but like mm -hmm. okay, so um, Jinx has a slight range advantage, but usually like ADC matchups uh, don't mean that much because the supports dictate the bot lane. Mm -hmm. um, Jinx definitely outscales Lucian. Um, Blitzcrank is pretty good early game. He can be good late game, like if he lands a really good hook, but uh, usually gets outscaled. And like the laning phase uh, should be like. Uh, Velkos and Jinx will try to like poke us down and uh, push us in probably. Um, um, and Blitzcrank can try to land a good hook and we can all in them. Um, like or or we can actually like push them in with like the presence of Blitzcrank, like the threat of Blitzcrank. Mm -hmm. um, but I think more often than not we get pushed in yeah yeah uh, this is very dependent on the first levels you know the first interactions in the lane how they go that can actually dictate the pace of the the lane for the next recall you know yeah. basically what, what would you say uh, lane, lane, the, the lane would go like pretty much pretty much what you said like uh this is like a very kind of like all-in lane versus poke lane scenario is very common you have this type of all-in lanes that would like to get level lead and insta go in or punish a mistake heavily by positioning a uh, position mistake um, at the same time avoiding pokes so that you can remain healthy for the all-ins um, and the other side of the lane is the poke lane which is again centered around centered around pushing you in so that they can poke uh, free have the lane kingdom um, and poke you as much as they can so that you can never all-in basically that's the how the pace of the game of the lane should normally go. Um, another aspect that I like to to talk about is the fact that uh, they look to scale, right? Jinx, Velkos, uh, they have like a very poor early game, a very poor um, Jinx, a, a very poor mid game in compared to Lucian in terms of spikes. Um, and I already see a pattern here. If you've noticed from the enemy team in your team. You have a very early game focused team and, and the enemy team has a very late game focused team, you know, kind of like yeah. Urgot, Amumu, and then the Jinx as well. Jinx Velkos? Uh, so, yeah, Jinx mostly. Yeah, so you can already see the pattern in, in, in that scenario in their team and in your team and you can already see what your goal should be for the game. You will probably look to get and win lane as hard as possible 
um, by punishing positional mistakes with the Blitzcrank. <laughs> Um, of course, yeah. Blitzcrank plays <laughs> his own game, you know, yeah. but... <laughs> um, I, but I mean, like, it sounds uh, easy, but, like, winning lane sometimes is hard. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Because of Blitzcrank just in general. But, yeah, okay, so we have a more early game focused team. Yeah, as well as the summoner, uh, sorry, the uh, the rune choice. Jinx is going mm -hmm. conquer and you have PTA, so that can uh, actually help a lot with the early game uh, for you in the, in the sense so you will have more damage yeah. um okay. and basically utilize the fact of listen that he's a early game jungler and that's how you can actually take a, try to take advantage of the fact that listen is playing early game right um if you guys want to win this game of course you need to close it out early before they actually scale because urgot late game and amumu late game um pa paired up with the jinx range you don't want to face that basically yeah and the echo has dark harvest so he will ultimately scale even if he fails early oh. game he will actually scale as well with it a little bit yeah um so you can already see the pattern of this game but again then after the the game starts and everything can just change in five minutes because of something that happened so you might need to adapt adapt but uh, this is what i like to call the making the win winning conditions of the game so you, you already have like a basic plan in your head um mm -hmm. We kind of like took a lot of time to guess this, but normally in every game, I just try to do this very automatic, very fast, look at the matchups, yeah, so see who's early, who's late, what do they want to do? Yeah. Do they want to TP gank bot? Do they like to do drakes because they have Shibana? You know, kind of like this fast an analysis of the team. And from there, you can already gather information and make a plan for the game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's see how the game goes now. Good luck, have fun. We totally yeah. miss, uh, uh, you know, we totally want that for the enemy team. <laughs> <It's just laughs> I just it's want. To not oh, I see, I see. It's just a psychology trick. Uh, kind of, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is really weird. Like, yeah, this invade is weird. Um, if you guys would. If you wanted to like make this happen, you basically should have. Um, I, would, no, I, would... I think this is actually an exception because like uh, Lee Sin pink top side, like enemy blue buff, so I moved there, and then we just kind of em ended up going mid lane, so it turned into a really we weird invade. Mm. Um, so the... I don't think this usually happens. Yeah, it just in case you normally experience this, like the best path is always to stay here, um, because if you go through here you're easily spotted by someone who's standing here. Um, but if you're from here, this rock gives you the fog of war advantage. And until you get here, they have no vision of you and Blitz, uh, Blitz can already make a surprise hook. Mm -hmm. But uh, from red side, I usually like go through bottom, bottom tri brush mm -hmm. uh, because that's like <laughs> really cheesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also another another thing you can do that. Like I normally just, if I'm playing ADC, of course you need to adapt to where your team is going. Uh, you know, whoever has the CC will kind of like dictate dictate uh, the, where they go. So we, we can already see kind of like uh, Blitz's skill. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so Listen seems like it's going to start red. So that's really nice. I think this is really nice by Lee because it will... Um, of course, you guys have Blitzcrank bot. So that is already like a huge gank setup. Um, compared to other lanes, like for example, top lane is Garen, so he has no way to set up a gank. Um, so I think this is smart by the listen to start red and then path into bot. Um, yeah, I don't think we actually do much this game, but yeah, we'll. I, in theory, it makes sense. We'll see. We'll see. So this is good. We'll already look into uh, get the um, the lane kingdom by getting level two first. I would keep auto in here instead of waiting too much. Mm. Like you can. I uh, go for the easy first three creeps and then wait for the uh, for the uh, for this ones. No, um, I just, yeah. Um, but if you push too much, like uh, the wave will push into them. Like if I had attacked like two or three more times, then uh, the wave would be like, or oh, it actually is. Yeah, but that. Uh, yeah, but that that's the pro that's the good thing. Like you want if you can crash the first wave, imagine how broken that is. 
Oh, okay. Because if if this now reset, uh, if this if this now was crashed into the tower, Blitz Blitz has a a clear shot, you know, for for uh, taking a hook. But right <laughs> now, if you see where, do you see your own minions here? Yeah. So you know the enemy minions are gonna stop the lane here, kinda. Okay. As I, soon as I they come. Think, like you could re realistically crash the first wave, but yeah, it, like if I had attacked more, then maybe. It's something you need to kind of like make a split decision, a split second decision. If you already see that they're not showing, I would instant level up Q and push ASAP so that you can crash it. Um, but I would, I would never want this scenario, which is gonna happen right no, now. This is really bad. Because now it's not even, it's not pushed all the way, and it's not even in the center. So now they are very safe. Yeah, I L actually meant um, make a really bad decision, like uh, next wave. So yeah, this is exactly what you don't want because you hit level 2 spike, but they are already close to the tower, so it's not something you would want. So you next time you go for this level 2 spike, you either want to push it all the way, um, so then it resets in the middle and you hit level 2 in the middle of the lane, or, you know, kind of like keep it up here or here, but not like here like this because it's really close. Yeah, but, but I wanted to keep it centered, um, but I attacked a bit too much and Blitz used both both of his uh, stacks, so the wraith just yeah just really yeah. What what you need to do then is insta crash it then if you see that it's yeah. not uh, or the blitz hook. Okay, so you, you uh, know what? even without the blitz hook, like that was I, I don't think that was a good trade. So let's see. Minions and both autos. I mean, you see, Belkos used the Q. Yeah. So it's not too bad, you know. Um, it's not too bad because. You see the enemy ADC used uh, enemy support used the only ability it has, so it's kind of like good to go into into the um, you know the, the trade instance once you see an enemy wasting an ability. That's that's okay. The fact is, uh, you know, you could not punish the way um, the trade further. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it seems like you guys are even in HP, like you you might not look like this uh, as a um, positive trade. It's still better for Lucian. If you manage to get a solo kill in the first in in the next minutes, you know, um, of course your objective is not to get poked by Belko's Jinx, but if you guys are low, you bo you are the one that wins in low. So this is a concept I like to do a lot in mid lane. In mid lane, you have champions like Fizz, Zoe, Silas that like to trade a lot, and even if the trade is not beneficial or positive for them, they still win. Because the nature of those champions is to trade a lot so that they can get you low. And then once both of you are low, they win in a low uh, fight. For example, if you end up in a 30% HP battle with Jinx, you will most likely win the battle. Um, at level 3, for example, let's say you both are 30% HP. You can just uh, E, basic attack, Q, basic attack, and W, and she's dead. But what can she do? She can just auto yeah. you, right? So you are the one that has the um, combat advantage in that scenario. So even even going for these neutral trades, kind of like even trade is good for you, as long as you don't get, you know, ultimately poked by the Velkos and not allow you to trade later. Mm -hmm. uh, I also... Oh. <laughs> yeah, being, being aware of the Velkos there is uh, something... I had some legs this game. I, I was think we you will see soon. Yeah, you uh, saw like a Belkos Q was like clipping a little bit. Yeah, then, yeah. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah, kind of like packet loss or something. So that's kind of like unfortunate, honestly. Yeah, but that usually doesn't happen. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. Um, so uh, you, uh, what you see right now is kind of good. I don't know if you've noticed, like, yeah, we made the mistake of the first uh, lane, uh, the first minion wave. So then the second one got frozen in front of their tower but what you i don't know if you've been paying attention to the wave but th this wave indicates now the third wave it's a pushing right so you have two options right you can either get it crashed in the tower and then reset lane in the middle or you can have a very smart idea which is understanding that okay listen is path in bot side right he already cleared camps he's looking to take scuttle crap and potentially gank bot so if you've noticed that Lee Sin wants to gank bot early, we can actually enable him to do so by kind of like freezing the lane here. Mm -hmm. So you, you see uh, you see this wave, um, you basically need to time it so that you, th you thin this wave and by the time it's pushing, it has to meet with the following wave that is coming kind of like here, right? Um, 
so this is something you kind of like need to see like 15 seconds beforehand to, to kind of like make this play. Um, but it's something you can easily do. It's basically just about hitting the wave, thin it out without actually killing all the minions. Just thin it out so you can at least save three or four creeps um, to make the lane freeze here in this in this area. If you do that, you just enable listen to go for easy ganks, honestly, and just threaten the enemy bot lane like crazy, which is kind of like your win condition. Yeah, that that's just uh, ho really hard to do, but so, but what do you mean? It's hard. It's hard to I mean, to come uh, up to with it, like, or or to thin the wave. Um, first of like how to evaluate how many minions uh, you need to like so it crashes about uh, not crashes but meets around here like freezes, um, and also like because. I have already low HP because I got poked so much, and they we, I have Blitzcrank support. It's hard for me to thin out of wave. Mm -hmm. So yeah, regarding the first point, um, you don't really need to know how much minions. You only need to know the the wave position, right? So you can look at the minimap and you see how the wave is is walking. Um, of course, it takes a little bit of experience. It's not something you kind of like do well in the first in the first time. But if you if you co are consistent with it and practice it, it's something you can get very good at. Um, so you, I would say, as long as you have three to four minions um, controlled, right, you can easily do this uh, this freeze here. Um, of course, this game this game looks hard because of kind of like the Blitzcrank making mistakes. But nonetheless, you should shoot and try for it. You know the best the best you can, even if you're not completely successful with it. Um, it's already looking like like you can. You know, like you, you look to order the wave as much as you can so that they don't crash it. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's not necessary. Like you, you don't look at it as like, yeah, I can't, yeah. you know, you look at it as like, but, okay, I'm going to try. Yeah, but I, I think in that situation, it was really, really hard because yeah, like, definitely. I had such low HP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like in this situation, like looking how they poked you, it's... Like, yeah, it's 100% like, yeah, you cannot do it. Nonetheless, it's good to look at the jungler, you know, when he was here and acknowledge the situation of the waves and have the thought, you know, the important thing is to have the thought in your, in your mind that you can enable a gank from listen if you position the wave good, basically. Okay. Because yeah. th there will be games where you can do it um, and it will be good for you to have this in your mind um, as, a, as a habit. So you can do, the, uh, do it in those games. Okay, okay. Yeah, the, the lag there, holy. Okay, so your objective right now is to stay as healthy as possible because you've already missed kind of like the early opportunities for kills. Um, and they will actually get lane kingdom right now. Uh, because listen, recalled, so you have no jungle pressure and Blitzcrank and you're getting poked. So what you need to do right now is basically, yeah, try to take as much minions as possible without taking damage. And just wait for a hook miracle, maybe. Okay. Um, which is good. This is exactly what you're doing. Uh, yeah, that was kind of like a weird trade, but I, I see you actually have a kind of like lag during it because you click, but then your movements happen like a split second later. So that's unfortunate, honestly. No, that just, I don't think, I, I'm not sure. Like when doing this trade, I felt like it was very weird how the champion like look you, you you click here look you click and your champion moves like very unresponsive so yeah, no, kinda i kind of like that was because of the minion block ah uh, i sure, see i see yeah actually it could be it could be you're I, right i was just frustrated uh so i went for like a bad thing <laughs> Uh, it's okay, it's okay. We try to do, you know, try to get uh, the best from the worst, basically. Trying to get as much minutes as we can. Okay, that's really nice. So basically, we're shooting uh, for... Right now, if you see the situation of the lane, I'm... Uh, if you pay attention to what Lee Sin did after the first recall, he's playing topside, right? So he's kind of like, yeah, you know, ditch bot lane, um, which I would have not done if I were asleep, but you need to acknowledge this as ADC and, and plan what you're going to do now. 
So I see you normally buy Essence River, right? So you have two backing options. Yeah. You can either go for 1.1k recall or 1.3k recall, right? For BF or Hammer. Um, so right now, if you want to plan for that recall, you can actually look for a cannon wave back. A cannon wave back is basically waiting for a, a cannon wave in you know a wave that has a cannon minion and uh, look uh, recalling those. Exactly. Push the previous wave before the cannon one so that you can, you know, um, get as much time as possible. And then once the cannon wave crashes here, you know, in the, in the center, you already backed and the enemy ADC has to push it. Uh, it takes more time to push. And even if the ADC pushes it, the cannon tanks like f uh, seven turret shots. So that allows you to get back into lane uh, without almost missing any of the other minions, right? Um, so you kind of uh, you kind of need to plan this ahead of time and realize because cannon wave is every third wave so if you've noticed that the previous two waves are normal waves you will know that the next wave is going to be cannon um so you can recall um i didn't actually pay that much attention um oh, so i don't know no what okay no no the quality is just uh, uh it, bad, but nothing's is, really happening so it's fine. is the screen share yeah no no it's fine oh, okay okay um, so yeah, like if you see, Belko's kind of like recalled preemptively, so that's really good. Um, I'm not yeah. sure what is the next minion wave, but I like to, every time I have this kind of like free time like this, uh, after pushing wave, I like to pan my camera to the wave, to my wave, and see if it's a cannon one. Because if it's a cannon, I insta rush back to recall, basically. Um, because now you can actually recall for BF sort. It, it will be like amazing, amazing back time in here. Uh, yes, it's a cannon wave. So, you know, this is kind of bad already because we should have already been recalling in, in right now. Okay. Um, because we, we, but because we didn't see that this was a cannon wave, we are kind of like, like uh, you, we're kind of in um, a situation where we either have to push it or, yeah, now that you've already started, yeah, you must push it now. Um, it's going to be okay because you, the belt goes recalled. Yep. But, yeah, you see how long it takes, right, to push a cannon wave. Yeah. So this whole time it would have been oh the blitzkrank actually is smurfed on on the cannon so <laughs> uh, that's good so yeah I would actually not even I would just ping yellow ping here and insta back uh, I don't care you know because it's okay. al it's already a lot of uh, temple loss so you will just run 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 recall oh something happens oh oh no yes <laughs> oh no yes <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay okay okay. Okay, so we got one kill. The enemy is, is uh, doing some donations. Okay, so you can already see how. Oh, oh, <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> I was gonna say. I, I should have just warded, then, uh, but yeah. Well, she warded here. Do you do you saw how she warded? Um. To use the ward. Oh, yeah. So even if you flash I, there. Yeah. No, I I mean the bush because then I could. Didn't need to move yeah. into her and get hit by her W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, and there's something crucial here. Look at their uh, uh, level. She's level 4. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Level 5. Unlucky. Unlucky as hell. Uh, but it, it's okay. It's okay. Like this, I think you barely made any uh, mechanical mistakes. So we can uh, take a look at this, but I think this was uh, good from your part. Um... Then here, what I would like to do, if I'm you, I'm kind of like leaning a little bit here while still autoing, so that I don't get hit by their minions and she gets hit by and she gets hit by all my minions. So that will increase the DPS a little bit. So you can already kind of like attack and move top at the same time and ward the brush, like you said. Um, that is something you can do, but it's, I think it will not make that much difference anyways. Um, so here is like yeah. Yeah, it's a very close fight. What can I say? But I think you mechanically it was correct. But the decision to go for this, I think it's very, very coin flip, and I would never do this, even uh, because you know you already see Blitzcrank failing hook, right? So that's already a, a no no for me. The next thing is like the time that we're like we already waste a lot of time from the cannon wave that we had to push. So I don't even want to waste more time. So I'm already like, if I'm in this situation, I'm heavy pinging the blitz, uh, the yellow ping, and I'm already ignoring him basically because I want to recall um, and, and, and have tempo advantage on the jinx. 
because a lot of players don't value this, but imagine you recall with BF sword and you come to lane and she still did not push the wave. That, imagine how huge that is. She is just a BF sword, Jinx, with nothing. Uh, she's having 1.5k gold and she needs to recall ASAP. But if she does, uh, then you just take Drake for free because of the tempo. A lot of people don't value tempo, but it's very huge. If you get really good back timings, um, you can enable drakes, enable ganks, enable a, a lot of stuff, basically. Yeah. So it's something to to note. So yeah, this thing happens. We, you know, you know, we try to make the best of the worst. Um, but of course, the jinx I think take, takes a double kill, right? Yeah, double kill. So it's not looking good. Um, but anyways, we do what we must. Uh, Jinx come. Ooh, listen. Not what I was looking for. Okay, so you go for dagger or? Uh, uh, refillable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's 100% what I was going to say. Like, you can actually be greedy and get boots and dagger, but in that pokey lane, I would 100% go refillable. So that's the right cho the right choice. Uh, listen, never mind. Um, so yeah. Now, how is the lane gonna look? Listen has barely ganked. Um, I, I would prefer if you, during game, press tap a lot more, so we can, uh, have more info, you yeah, know? I, I think I pressed tap, uh, like, uh, 10 seconds ago, because uh, ah. after Garen shut down, um, Ugot, like, uh, even before that. Okay, okay, let me... Yeah. Okay, okay, I saw, I saw it, yeah, yeah, let's see, okay. So, uh, Mumu level 4, okay, that's really good that the Mumu is level 4. I'm basically looking for when a Mumu hits 6, because that's when I'm gonna get ha uh, camped bot lane, most likely, if he wants to play correctly, you know? Um, so I'm looking for that, you know, every time I see a jungler with a very good ultimate, I try to, like, look for when they get the 6, honestly, because that's when you need to be more careful. Um, of, uh, of course, you just wasted both summoners in the previous fight, so nonetheless, you still need to play careful in the next few minutes. Uh, but it's good to know as well when the enemy jungler hits 6. Yeah. And by this time, Lissin has not done a lot. Ah, oh, wait, wait, he has actually done quite a few things in the top side, okay. Um, but now it's when uh, Amumu can start making stuff happen after 6. Of course, I think uh, listen is harder. Uh, uh, listen is stronger in this minutes still, but you know, um, we could have yeah, we aftershock. we yeah as well. <laughs> but yeah, the, but if we actually did the recall thing before, we would have actually been able to do Drake easily in this situation and and get the first Drake. The the best thing about bot prio is if you're a smart player and you have good back timings and you you know care about tempo like we talked about, you can enable drakes and have a higher impact on the game as adcs a lot of people ask man how do i have impact as adc it seems like i'm not a jungler i'm not a mid laner i have zero impact on the game uh, then it comes later team fights and blah 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 you know well this is another really good the way to have impact in the game is by having tempo on the enemy bot lane and having constantly bot prior it can enable drakes it can enable your support to roam mid and impact it, it can enable a, a lot of things um, so I would definitely look for the tempo um, in games, basically. Look for tempo, uh, like r best recall, um, you know, better recalls than the enemy ADC and stuff like that. And keeping them pin in lane when uh, when they overstay because you, recall, er, you recalled and she didn't, then you keep it in lane by constantly pushing and yeah, that's a, that's a huge deal. Akali is kind of like positioning, but I don't know if this works. Jinx has no flash, so this can actually work as soon as Blix, mm -hmm. but Blitz wasted hook. Let's see. Okay, Akali missed the first R, but it doesn't matter. Okay, I like that, easy. In mobile ADC without flash, it's just a dead ADC. So now you guys, okay, it seems like a fight is happening. Yeah. But you're not moving the camera. Like you need to be a bit quicker with the camera, so you can assess quickly what's going on and if you need to move or not. Um, so this is already looking like GG, you know, they already inted two kills, so now this should be, yeah, this should be Drake, so yeah, you can easily push this, or... Uh, 
Depends. It seems like it's taking you too hard to push. I would actually ditch the CS and just take the Drake, but maybe it's okay to go for the CS. I think you can take Drake anyways. I think it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's okay. I think it's okay because you have listened jungle. If it was like a tanky jungler that could not start the Drake by himself, then I would just ditch the CS and take the Drake because I'm the, the damage dealer, but listen has the damage, so you can push the wave first. Oh, another donation. Okay. This <laughs> kind of... Oh, but he takes it. No. Yeah, I, I attacked the Drake. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, okay, that's good. Really nice because... Okay, what can you do here? Okay, so you, I think now you could actually push the wave. You can actually choose to insta-recall for the tempo, but because you just took Drake, there is not a lot to get from tempo right now, right? Because if you arrive to lane before Jinx, I can, uh, because I of can their recall... Objectives or something. Yeah, th th that's the thing. Like, I would do this tempo thing when I'm... You know, when Drake is up and I have something to force. But if I get to the lane quicker than Jinx now... It's not really like an act, like a like an actually force something, right? Because there's nothing on the map. So I think in this scenario here, I would just go push the wave before recalling, just because there's nothing there's nothing to do later after getting tempo, right? So you might as well just push it and get the golden recall because you would actually actually you would actually want to recall on 1.1k. So if you recall with this gold value, you actually don't get anything good for uh, Essence River, you know? So I would just push this ace up to get the gold. The next wave is coming. I would actually ult the wave. Yeah. Or keep it. Uh, you can actually oh. keep it, maybe. No, no, this is so bad. <laughs> you, you, sound, you sound traumatized. <laughs> yes, but it's actually funny, so it's fine. Okay, okay, we can make some content out of it. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Wait, that was very close. Wait, that was so... <laughs> oh, God. Okay, okay, that, that was actually good. Uh, but <laughs> very lucky. Yeah, it was kind of like, a, I would say the decision to ult linearly, I would say I, th I would say is wrong because, you know, he, like, you need to, yeah. if you ult, you need to stand still in a straight line. And if you stand still in a straight line, <laughs> you get hit. So the decision to ult, I think it's not the correct one. Um, but then I think you realize that quickly and stop the ultimate and then move. Um, and then the blitz, the blitz makes a really good hook and yeah, survive. So yeah, that's how it goes. I don't know why. Uh, you're out of mana. This is unlucky, but yeah, you need to recall before Jinx comes. He can actually snipe you with ulti. So I would be yeah, I having would my finger on that. the A. Ah, okay, yeah, she doesn't I... even try. Nice. Okay, okay. So that that was an interesting fight. Also, okay. I think Jinx didn't have ulti, but I, I didn't realize that. Like, she used it at Drake. Uh, ah, true. Yeah, true, actually. I didn't even notice. No, I, I didn't too, uh, in the game. Mm, like, I see, I see. Now I realize. So yeah, like I would say mechanically here is the okay. R thing, basically. That's the mechanic mm. stuff. Um, And then before the mechanic, like, and the rest is okay. So the R is the only kind of like thing to mention, but the rest is okay. But before this is what I wanted to talk about because mm. you're kind of like I in a rush, push. right? Yeah, like kind of like in a rush. So you can make a decision here. If you want to, you can ult the wave, but then you will not have ultimate for the next fight in a 2v2 bot lane. This is okay because there is no Drake. But if you feel like you want to force something, I would save my ulti. But because in this situation, it kind of like looks like there's nothing going on bot lane, there's no Drake, nothing to be aware of for, for the next five minutes, then I can actually ult this so that it can enable me to recall and not lose time because I already have the gold value for recall. So this is like a conscious choice you can make. I'm not saying this is the all the best decision, but I'm, I think this is what I would do. And then, of course, it's a trade-off. I will not have R for the next one minute 30 or whatever. So then I will play passive for the next one minute 30, which is okay. You know, it's kind of like a trade-off. It's a decision you need to make. It's kind of like, a, you know, okay. what, whatever you prefer at the end of the day. I'm yeah. just letting you know that you have that option. Um, and then this happens. But yeah, like this is, this is okay. Um, and then we get... Uh, oh, you go for IE first, this game? 
No, but I just... Uh, I don't know really why. <laughs> Yeah, I hate uh, IE, IE first item, man. No, I don't. I don't go for IE first, but I buy cloak, and I don't know why. I uh, wait. Cloak is does cloak build from? Yes. Ah, cloak. cloak ah, into, into essence. essence. Ah, okay, okay, okay. That's good then. I, I, I was thinking that cloak doesn't build into it. Holy shit, my mind. Okay, but. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would go for I the. I still think. The yeah, for the hammer. hammer yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go for warhammer. Yeah, yeah. So Warhammer would be better because you get the AD cooldown reduction. <laughs> you saved my life. <laughs> yeah, make Dimitrov happy. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, okay, yeah, get get his confidence up. You know, when I see Autofield player playing Thresh Hook uh, or Blitzcrank, I you need to get his confidence up so that he can you know go for those yeah. hooks. It's kind of like a psychological no, thing. It's it definitely doesn't help if you like flame them or anything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's kind of like a no-no. Okay, so this is good. The wave is in a good spot. I would keep it here, you know. I would not push it because by keeping it here, you accomplish two things. You don't have flash, so by keeping it here, you're safer from ganks. And at the same time, you put uh, Jinx in risk of getting ganked or pulled by Blitzcrank. So having the lane here is perfect for you. If you can keep it here, yeah. it's perfect. I so think uh, because of the cannon minion, I can't really. Oh, actually. Yeah, Belkos actually help you, so that's nice. So if you can keep it frozen, it is amazing. If look, Akali is even noticing this, and she's actually maybe looking to gank. Yep. Mm. Okay, so Belkos now E. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Mm. You know, there's a lot of misplays from your team, the Blitzhook, the Akali, so uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you did your part nice, so there's nothing to to say there. I mean, this fight maybe, but yeah, I did a lot of mistakes too. Like here, you mean? No, not in this fight. Like, ah. I shouldn't really do much. Yeah, I think there's nothing, there's not much you can do here. But like before, <laughs> definitely. Mm. By the way, um, do you, do you have an attack attack champions only key? Do you use it? Uh, sorry, sorry, what? The attack champion ah, so, ta target uh, champions only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have found it. Um, do you use it? But um, yes, but I use uh, like attack move way too often. So uh, and that doesn't like uh, add up because mm -hmm. if you use attack move, then attack champions only is uh, yeah, it's kind of useless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying it because in situations like this, uh, look uh, look at how hard it is to click on Jinx. You know, uh, if you have mm -hmm. attack champions only, uh, you can insta put it, and you you will not even be able to click the tower. So you can just put the mouse here, and it's that's very smooth, I think. Um, as an ADC, I would actually prioritize it and learning it, the habit. But if you notice that you use a lot of uh, A-click, uh, then it's okay, I would say. Um, it's something you can look into in the future as well. Um, but yeah, it's very useful, by the way. Yeah. Um, I definitely it... use it more now than like previously, at least. Yeah, I don't know where you have it bounded. I personally put it, uh, I have like mouse buttons. So I, this is my mouse and I have like side buttons. So I have it here. And every time I'm like getting into a close fight or something is getting into the tower, I just click it, you know? And then that gives me the, I have it on toggle. So I only need to click yeah. it once and, and I think that's good. Okay. I don't approve this play, but it's good because yeah, <laughs> I mean, the jungler is healed and uh, Velkos is coming soon, so yeah. So it's kind of like a no-no. So this is what we talked about earlier, right? Avoidable deaths, right? This yeah. skill that gives you a, a 300 gold can be easily achieved by two waves of minions and you will not need to flash and die for it, right? Yeah. So this is something I would say to not go for this because you're 100 percent dead in this situation of course the enemy might make a huge misplay and you can get alive but if you know the jungler is behind you if you see him in the minimap and you know belkos died like uh, 30 seconds ago or something and he's coming back from lane i would not shoot for this just because of because i'm because i'm 100 percent dead here right there's a chance there's a chance the jungler in game like i didn't 
pay attention. Ah, uh, I see, I see. But yeah, that was very. Yeah, this uh, is. Yeah, in hindsight, that wasn't good. Um, this is just uh, like we talked before, you know, kind of like avoidable deaths that you can work on. This is honestly just a uh, just a habit. At the end of the day, it's not even too big of a deal. It's just a habit that we have as players, and we need to like stop, you know, doing it. There's uh, the way I practice it is just like setting it up as a goal and only focusing on that goal for like ten games, and that already creates a good habit for me to reduce deaths per game. Ooh, the bliss is smurfing. Mm -hmm. Let's go, Dimitri. Dimitrov. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think Akal is having a hard time killing this. Okay, okay. Alright, it's, it's, how is the lane? Okay, I think this is this is good. Because you yeah, see Akali is taking your lane, so I think this is very smurf. But I would actually walk mid. Oh, okay. I would have just walk in mid. So uh, let's see. Okay, so you, this is here. You see a Kali bot. I would instantly go mid. I mean, of course, I would pan, pan the camera mid lane and see how's the lane. But I see that the minions are like starting to push. So I would actually just go mid and take mid CS, push it, and then a Kali pushes bots and you guys swap lane. That would be the okay. ideal thing to do, basically. Nonetheless, the the Gromp is also a, gr a great idea. By the way, I think that's also good. So it's okay. Um, so we push this, uh, Belkos died, right? So this is really good. If Blitzcrank comes before him, we can actually, guys, pressure the Jinx a little bit. Okay, he's back. Okay, next Drake is coming. Um, I'm not sure in how much, um, but I can see on the minimap, minimap is coming. So we kind of like need to prep, prep for that. Um, so as long as we keep laying... Ooh, we got some lag action going on. <laughs> okay, Amumu. Yeah, the the heal was uh, you yeah, know. I, d I don't think I should have healed him. Uh, you you definitely have the really honor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's uh, you know, I would do it for for the teammate, but yeah, in the end, I would save it if I'm trying to win. Yeah. Uh, but this is unfortunate because now Blitzring died before the fight. Yeah, their fight is going on. I don't like that you don't pan the camera though. Mm. Like even if you don't move, which is I think okay in this situation, it's kind of like fifty-fifty. I would. Yeah, I would actually move just to check. But I would actually, even before going in, I would move the camera to know what's going on. Um, because you are not able to make, right right now, how can you make a decision if you don't know the information, right? So the way uh, I, I uh, go about it is like every time there's something going on, I like to instantly move the camera because with the information that I get from seeing what's happening, I can make a better decision um, than if I don't move it, right? Um, so maybe if you had the information, right, because you at, th at that point you didn't know what's happening, but if you had the information five seconds earlier, pro probably you would have moved by yourself, you know, you would have said, oh shit, let's move, you know, um, so that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a sad part, it's okay. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of micro things that we could have done better. But what I don't want you to focus on, I don't really want you to focus on the micro stuff. Like, I don't really care about that. I think the important thing is to move the camera earlier. Okay. I think that's very that will make a very huge uh, difference in your play. If you get the info first, you'll make better decisions. And better decision in the long run will lead to a uh, more win rate. So, like, would that be something like, that you write down as a goal for a game, like pen the camera to every fight or something? Yeah, yeah, I would actually do that. Like, it's very easy to get, like, it seems like a very absurd thing to do, but imagine how quickly you, like, if you have that goal as only goal, right? And you're practicing and you only have that goal. And if you do it for like five to 10 games, that's going to be very easy for your brain to associate as something important, right? Because you're only doing that in that game or you'll only you're only focusing on that mm -hmm. so if you do that for like if you do that for like five to ten games this will quickly get uh incorporated into your skill set basically you will all, all become a habit for you and you will not need to do it consciously it will automatically happen um so it's something you can quickly i would actually do like i would actually write it in the excel for like five to ten games i would just constantly move my camera 
get info and assess situation. And if you do that for 10 games, you will actually complete the goal and you can just move on to the next. So the micro stuff is like, of course, the R thing. I, don't, I, I actually don't like your target prioritization here. Because you will never kill Velkos. So I, I don't like your target prioritization. Here I would shoot for, since Echo has ultimate, I would shoot for a Mumu. Not just because of the Echo ultimate, but because he's one level under. And if you kill a Mumu, you have higher chance of securing the Drake, right? Which is the objective. Um, so yeah, I would actually would have hidden a Mumu this whole time. And maybe if you have all, used all your autos to a Mumu, he would have been like this HP. And yeah. Akali can finish it off uh, in a few secs. I'm not sure what happens now. Oh, unlucky there. That was like a micro thing there where you could have yeah, warded. If I, if I had warded, then with a bit of luck, I could have killed him. But yeah, but yeah. I, that wasn't like, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a micro thing. It's not even... No, no, but I mean... Uh, Ooh, Akali. If I just didn't go for Velkos earlier, then that would have been a lot easier. Uh, yeah, as well, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's the big thing to notice. The target prioritization here is something you can also write down in the Excel and practice by itself. Um, yeah, is that's it... a, a, something I struggle with. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would just do it like like we said, like any other habit. I would just write it in the Excel, and for like 10, 15 games, I would just go into team fights. And even before team fights, before every objective, I would t tap and and see the information and see, okay, for who do I go? Okay, I go to this guy or I need to go to this guy, you know? Um, and that's how you would practice target prioritization. It doesn't matter if you make a decision wrong. As long as you're acti actively making the decision, that is what matters because your decision will improve with time. But if you don't do it, it will never improve, basically. Okay. It's like the winning conditions thing during loading screen. It doesn't matter if you do the winning conditions wrong, right? It doesn't matter if you assess wrong the lanings, because that will improve over time as your knowledge of the game improves. But if you never start doing it, you actually never improve, right? Because you're never pushing your limits, uh, your knowledge of the game, basically. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we get the Drake. That's really good. You know, the game is looking okay. Like, um, of course, we would have preferred to, like, speed up this game and finish it quickly and have a lot of pressure bot lane. It was not the case early game. Now it seems like we're slowly putting some pressure in. Um, but yeah, we don't want the enemy scaling, basically. Um, okay, Belkos is mid. This is bot. So I think this is fine. I would move for a tribush ward before doing this. Like in your situation, before going for these clicks here, I would move for a tribush ward. You know, you walk to the brush, throw the W. If there's no one, I would put the one of the wards. Mm -hmm. Just so you can keep doing what you're about to do now, but safely, basically. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's why we do it. <laughs> oh, God damn it! Abumu is so broken. There's no... Wait, he doesn't... Did he fail the second queue or what? So he queues, they, we, then we, you have 8 seconds? I, I think it was just... Did he miss the second queue? I think he has it like now. Yeah, but he doesn't go for it, what? I, I guess they I guess they, don't, they didn't time your flash, so they don't know if you have flash or not, but nonetheless, okay. That's Amumu's fault. Uh, but yeah, either way, up... even, even with... Ah, you end up staying. Yes. Yeah, but look what happens because we didn't go for the vision. Now we're kind of like forced to leave lane, and even if we stay, now it's risky because we can die. So yeah. you already see kind of like the consequences of the. Ooh, that's my uh, quick uh, reaction there. Nice. Ooh, some okay. Sticky situation. <laughs> I'm uh, I should have just left. Okay, this is good though. The, the fact that you went on the gin is very good. Yeah, I, it was my only option, really. Yeah, yeah, but that's very good, because you see how you win fights against the Jinx early? That's really, that's really nice. Um, yes. But yeah, we should have basically just left, honestly. Yeah. So that's our mistake. We acknowledge that. Now, they take bot tower, which is unfortunate, because we want to take it early before them so that we can rotate before them. 
Um, but now they will rotate before us. And they have a very good siege though with Belkos and Jinx. I think they have good siege. So if they go mid now, they will actually destroy Akali, I think. Which I, uh, yeah, they go mid. And now we are behind in tempo. So this is another thing about tempo. The ADC that gets the rotation first has a big tempo. Okay, enemy Belkos ints. But the a normally the ADC that has the tempo, you know, that destroys the first tower, has the tempo and they can already put pressure on other lanes and you're behind basically it's kind of like you're uh behind in time right and, and they are already you know closer to ending the game and you still need to do some steps before that so that's that's what you don't want to do again we uh, do the same mistake of walking without putting vision into the tribus uh, yeah but i think uh, this time i actually know where the enemies are like, ah wait true 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 yeah, they top. My bad. Yeah, actually, you're right. Actually, so that's really good that the Belkos died in the mid lane because now your team can just defend. Normally, this would not happen, and the enemy will be at this time taking the tower or pushing for taking the tower. But again, uh, we're they're, they're just humans like us and make mistakes. So, yeah. so we go for the tower. Correct play. And then, yeah, we'll just get next wave and recall for BF Sword. Mm. Yes. Uh, wait. Yeah, that was a weird path in here. Yeah. Like, if, if there's a fight mid, I would not group. You know, I need to spend my goal. There's no immediate objective that requires me to fight. So, yeah, I would actually need to spend my goal before the next raid comes. Um, yeah, and the Herald top lane. Ooh, we destroyed two towers. Um, I think this is a little bit of overstay here, cause yes, cause yeah, you know the the Drake is coming, and you would have preferred to recall and spend the money before the Drake, so you have higher chance of winning the team fight. Um, instead of doing this, and Amumu is in the river. <laughs> okay, this Blitzcrank. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, but you're going a bit too far, I think. Yeah, I mean, I thought I had time to do this wave. But you saw the Mumu, right? You saw it on the river. He's right now behind you. Yeah. But I guess not. I guess he doesn't want to. What? They just leave you? That's so weird. Okay, Anna, oh, no, they don't leave you. Okay. I was like, why do they let them live? But yeah, the thing is, even if you die here, okay, okay, the mistake of the death. But the most important thing is that we did not recall for the Drake. And that is very bad for us because now we not only did not spend the gold from the waves, but they will actually get the objective because of, you know, we are all in base. Um, so this is un really bad because, yeah, we lose the Drake. Yeah, I, I can't run here, so I just go for Echo. Yeah, I think that's good. That's a good decision. A split no, split no. decision there. Now we practice mechanics now. <laughs> we push the limits. <laughs> uh, oh, that's unlucky. What I, can I say? <laughs> okay, and the yeah, team just overextends. Just left. Yeah, yeah, like way, way before, yeah. And the team should not have done this anyways. Cause, yeah, there's no point in fighting. We all we already lost the Drake. Why would we fight here, bot? But yeah. Okay, so at least we get IE. We push mid. Yeah, we collapse. This should be a kill. We collapse on the Urgot. I think he's still killable at this point of the game. Yeah. Give him a five more minutes, and you're gonna see a, a bit of struggle killing that champion. Actually, um, he he gets really fast this game. Ooh, yeah, like it gets really annoying to kill Orgot later with Conqueror. Okay. So, mm, yeah, let's push bot first and then group mid to take mid tower. But, okay, I think this is okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then go mid, yeah, okay, so that's good. Um, mm, I would not go for this. 
I would have grouped mid to take the mid tower because we have uh, Blitzcrank. And there's a high chance you can break a team fight there, and you are at the strongest point of your comp. If you've done the winning conditions in the loading screen, you're right now assessing like, okay, we're the strongest point. We have right now the highest chance of winning the game in these minutes. Like in the next five to ten minutes, is our highest chance of winning the game. Um, so instead of doing this, I would have grouped mid to create a team fight basically, because that would have allowed to take mid tower at worst, and the best would have been Baron. Um, just because of the nature of Lee Sin and Blix and Blitzcrank, they both want to make something happen, right? Um, but it's good. It's good nonetheless. They they come for a team fight, but it's a very bad team fight. It's a very bad team fight. Echo, echo. Okay, Urgot has G eight. This seems very hard to kill, man. Yeah, this team fight is like very ugly what can i say there was too much chaos for you to position oh a fun champion isn't it yeah. <laughs> a mumu is a very fun champion <laughs> uh but yeah this is kind of like um so let's analyze so first we make the mistake of not grouping uh, not grouping before mm -hmm. and then let's see the position in this team fight so Mm, I would have insta eat here in here. Okay. Because a Mumu is knocked up in the air by listen, so I would E quickly for kill before he can get out of the stun. So you okay. see the do you see the listen R? So listen R's uh, yeah, yeah. and then they get kicked. So you have a split second where you can E and kill him and he cannot R. So that's uh something to note there. Because by not doing that then he R's and yeah he escapes. Unlucky. Yeah. That's the first thing. And here I would have pinged back. So after this happens, I don't know you, but I feel like it's unwinnable, this team fight. Yeah. So the Akali is dead. We have no way of killing a GA Urgot and an Amumu tank like like this. So we have no way. So as soon as you see a team fight is not going how you want it to go, you need to kind of like direct your team with pings. So if you see it's not going how you want it to go, just spam ping the yellow ping and just, there's two things. So you're spamming the yellow ping and that's not enough. You also need to make body language. Like in real life, you need to move out so that your team is like, oh, holy shit, my ADC is moving out. Let's go all out. But if you stay here, you give your team body language like, okay, my ADC is here. We can still fight, but it's not what you want, right? So I would do these two things. I would just spam ping the yellow and go back. Like move, even if my team didn't move yet, I would just move out because it's already, like you see, this is a lost team fight. And if you see it, you just ping it and go back. So there's no need, yeah, there's no way of win it, winning it this basically. Yeah. No, uh, that... Like without Sam's and without frontline, I really think it's unwinnable for you, you know, for like you have no way of doing damage here. And that's kind of like annoying, but it's the it is the truth basically in in this fight. So yeah, this is like another concept you can kind of like implement. It's kind of like orchestrating or directing your team like orchestra. You just spam ping and then with body language indicate what your uh intentions are basically. Yeah, I'm not very good at team fights, like in general. Um, but that's something I need to work on. But yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like, you, there no one is born good. We all <laughs> we we all are bad first, and then we practice the things that we are bad, and we get a little bit better. That's how we improve. So, okay, listen, that was very good. This, this coordination was very good here. Okay, so yeah, like I would say, don't get overwhelmed. So you can see like, yeah, I make a ton of mistakes. Yeah, but don't get overwhelmed by this. You just grab grab one of them, work on it for five to 10 games and go to the next one, five to 10 games, to the next one, five to 10 games. Just little by little, yeah. one by one. Okay, that's, that's something I'm very bad at. Like I get easily overwhelmed when I see like the list of things I need to improve and like, it, yeah, that's... Uh, I can definitely try that and see how it works. Yeah, I think the Excel kind of like helps you a little bit to to do that. 
if you can write down the things you need yeah. to practice and if you know for how many games you're going to practice each one and how much you're improving each one i think it helps a little bit you know to see the progress mm-hmm. have have that sense yeah. of progression might help you psychologically because if you don't put it into words and you don't make a plan yeah it seems like but who is going to improve all of these things you know i don't have that much time whatever and go next mm-hmm. you know but if you put it into a list and you go week by week ticking stuff right i think that's very like that's better for the mind you know i think it will allow you to practice uh better and improve mm-hmm. that seems good um also something um we are like already a bit over time so is that like just um for for me it's fine i always tend to overshoot my <laughs> sessions i'm sorry I mean, really I, i'm sorry I about like it, it but like just want to like mention it okay 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 yeah i'm I'm really sorry about it like i normally always overshoot no, no, my hours but I mean, if it's fine for you good. okay 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 like i i'm fine we we'll just keep going um if it's fine for you we can just keep going um yeah I've, we're, we're I've close to the really to the end yeah. anyways um so here um, we kind of greet out for the top lane i don't know if you've noticed the drake is spawning uh i noticed too late in that game like um i think my team pings me and then i move but it's really late i see i see yeah that's basic minimap awareness i don't know how's your minimap uh, awareness how would you rate um, it personally I've been working on that like i would say like six out of ten so mm-hmm. decent okay okay so then i think it will not take that much games to practice it uh, at least with the objectives you know like I'm um, uh, as a player, well, as a mid laner, I yeah. play play a lot around objectives, so I already have the habit of always like even I'm the one that normally sp- spampings my team for objectives because of my habits. Um, but as an ADC, if you don't have this habit, um, I would just try to focus for like five to ten minutes, you know, well, uh, five to ten games, my bad, <laughs> um, into it, and I think you will get quickly the habit, honestly, on on this. Um, because again, we gave already two drakes uh, by our minimap awareness. The previous that we died to a Mumu in the bot lane, and this one that we wait the listener stole it. Okay, that's Murph. Yep. I didn't notice. Um, but yeah, we kind of like gave two drakes if the listener didn't steal it, because we no. This is kind of like a coin flip. It's not gonna happen every game, but we could have been in the drake here um, and secure it. Basically, that's a huge thing to remember. I think here you should not be afraid to walk in. You you have uh, summoners and your front line is here with you. So there's a l- there's no I threat. Echo dash? is dead. Yeah, I would actually just dash in or just walk up if you want to save dash for dodging Kamumu Q. I would okay. just walk up. I, I would just walk up and start auto in. Because there's no need to hesitate like this because this gives you your team again bad language like bad body language this gives your team signs that you're not confident in this fight and this indicates your team okay let's go back but this looks like a one team fight to me because uh echo is dead so you've traded support for mid lane that's huge um so you would normally win this um so i would just walk up here no joke i would just walk up q you can actually save your e to dodge a mumu q if you want but because you've gave your team body language that you're not confident they all spread out and now there's no fight basically maybe you can still collapse here belkos is top what oh belkos is top nah it's okay it's okay i think it's now time to back off that's a good touch this is dangerous i don't know if they ult you here okay 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 the good thing here is that urgot is out of mana and this is huge because he cannot w then but yeah uh listen recalls so you're kind of like in this situation you are really dependent on your team what they do then you do but you just need to be closer to the objectives basically so it's already good you can either farm top or mid in this situation uh what are you shooting for next item because because uh, you bought agility you bought agility cloak so what what can you build it into can you get pd uh, from it yeah okay okay i think that will be good in this situation oh yeah 
we should have flashed here, I think. So you the E is good here, and I would have flashed this ultimate. Like not get hit by all of it, I would just flash it. Or yeah, flash it. That would have been the only choice, I think, here. But again, it was a bad team fight to take. Like we should not be in this situation. Like you see top list top, the Akali is going bot. So this is a bad situation to take. To be this close, you know. I think if you have primed your, bri uh, your brain before this, like what I like to do is press tab and see who has the most threat on the team to catch me. Like what abilities I need to be aware of. I think you would have not been in this situation because, you know, in late game, I would not get this close to Belkos because he can just Q army and I'm slowed and dead and I need to flash. So I would not give them even the opportunity, you know? Mm. The best way to dodge a punch is to not be there. Like <laughs> Bruce Lee said. <laughs> Given the old the old analogies. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, and there's one more death, I think, right? And then we, we yeah. lose. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we just lose here. I run it down one more time, but... <laughs> Uh, I mean, they they got a good uh, catch on you guys, the enemy team. So yeah, and they make made good use of it. Yeah. And they just end. Ah, <laughs> uh, Urgot is unkillable. This is why we well, he's actually three levels ahead. That's something to note. Not even from items, but just from the levels, he's already unkillable. Yeah. And then we died one last time. It's okay. <laughs> the recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've covered a lot, um, but like we said, I'll send you yeah. the recording of the bot so you can take a, a few more notes on the stuff that we went through. But again, don't be overwhelmed. There's a lot of things, but as long as you go one by one, you should actually be just okay practicing. Um, you have your time. You don't need to rush anything. Just weekly you know week by week you practice one at a time um it depends on how many games you can play a day a day of course but it's uh you know there's no pressure behind you so you can just work on one at a time like we said in the flex queue if you don't have a smurf or in a smurf if you have it whichever you prefer um, but having that learning zone where you only focus on that one thing that you need to practice i think is very good because if you go into those games and try to win them you're not really practice practicing aren't you it's just like it's just another game you know it's just another yeah. solo queue climbing game so i think it's important to separate pla uh, practice from climbing with uh, with a different account or a different queue like flex queue because that's like it, it gives you your brain this imaginary separation you know between between this type of games uh, learning and climbing yeah and i think that it's really good. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I mean, no, I, I think we went over a lot. Like, I mean, uh, like especially like uh, objectives, map awareness, and like team fights and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think a lot of the things that you said, I can like try to apply like uh, piece by piece. Like, I hope, I, I will definitely try. Like, yeah, of course, of course. There's no need to put any sort of pressure, like. You know, you are just improving. If you have struggles with something, you can just go at it and focus on it more. Um, in any case, like even if the session finishes now, you can always message me up on Discord or we can look for another session later on. So that's honestly like, fine. If you struggle with something, we can go over it the next session as well. So that's completely fine. Yeah. All right. Let me know do you, if you have any other questions before I close out the recording. Um, yeah, w one question, like, to, for, uh, from deliberate practice, like, um, I think it's sometimes hard, like, if you have goals that don't ha really, where you can check if you've done them or not, um, do you, let, like, then, for example, like, uh, pen your camera to every team fight or something, or instantly, like, that's really hard to check if you've done that, so would you mm -hmm. then, like, assign a number to that for example like this game pen your camera to like five team fights or 
yeah i know yeah i know exactly what you mean there's like this type of stuff that you cannot take a look through statistics you know it's not like this for game it's not like it's not a number right it's something more yeah. abstract something more in the game related so what i do about it is i try to take feedback from the recent games so if i were you i would just record my last games that i'm gonna practice this um and notice if I'm not doing it basically if I'm not panning my camera enough it's kind of like it's a bit more of a subjective term so as long as you're content with your level of camera panment <laughs> I don't know if that's a word as long as you're content with that specific skill uh, by watching your replays you know by assessing from your recent performance feedback then I would say okay check this you know I check it and I, it's good for me if you see in the future that it's getting worse because you, for some reason, started not doing it that much or whatever, you would, you know, notice that again by taking feedback from your recent games. That's how I think about stuff that you cannot necessarily run uh, write down like one, two, or three. You know, like a number. Mm -hmm. so th yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's definitely a bit of a more subjective way of measuring it. But yeah, I would just look at my recent games, record them and see if I'm not doing it uh, as much as I should or as much as I would like to. And then if if I'm not, then I would say, okay, I need to practice this again or I need to practice this more um, until I do it the, the way I would like to.